Dr. William Rosenberg, professor of political science at Drexel University, is the co-author of News Verdicts, the Debates and Presidential Campaigns, among other things. He follows politics, and he joins us time to time to talk about the same. He is tweeting at Dr. B. Rosenberg and is here this morning. Bill, welcome back. Thanks for being here this morning. Good morning. Let's talk first about the shutdown. Uh, maybe not so important uh, with the things you were mentioning in some of the notes uh, from this weekend in politics, but... The president insists that this is hurting the Democrats, that they are showing intransigence, and new polling indicates that the Republicans and the president are being held more accountable for this, according to voters around the country. I guess the question is, where does it, where, how do we decide whether it's hurting them politically in terms of their, their strongest supporters, both Democrats and Republicans? Well, I think what's actually taking place is that um, we're seeing this massive game of chicken going on between Congress and the White House over this uh, funding issue and the border wall. Ultimately, uh, I don't think anyone is happy about what's taking place. Um, The question is, in the end, how will we resolve the problem? And in the end, who will be held responsible for the pain and suffering that occurred? Um, There are a lot of reasons why um, you have to really question sort of the motivations about what's going on. Um, The the fact is, though, that a large number of uh, people in the public, large percentage support the president, continue to support the president uh, through all his trials and tribulations, and continue to support him with this border wall uh, controversy and the government shutdown. At the end of the day, though, you have to really wonder, well, how much sense does this really make? We have 800,000 federal employees that are on a um, uh, situation where they're being told they're not going to get paid. Many of them are not even being asked to come into work. For those budget crisis type people, uh, why would you be paying people to not do anything? At the end of the day, that work is never going to be made up. But in terms of the suffering, they're going to have financial crises and all. So all the federal contractors will never be repaid. So in in terms of finances, this shutdown makes no sense. But people aren't really thinking about it. I think they're thinking about it more on an emotional level. Are they for or against the president? In terms of other things, you know, the president says, well, we're going to take money from the military or from disaster relief to pay for this. Well, How's that going to make us safer? Okay, if we're talking about border wall security, how about the fact that you know we have TSA people that are supposed to guard our airports that aren't getting paid, and now we're hearing reports at some airports where it's hitting sort of a crisis level. So where this ultimately ends up is going to be, I think, how people perceive the president versus the Democrats. Uh, Again, Bill, uh, let's talk a little bit about something that happened over the weekend. The Washington Post had a story that the president supposedly was keeping the transcript to himself, didn't even share it with his aides in the White House administration people, uh, this having to do with his conversation with Vladimir Putin privately. And the New York Times, in a separate story, talked about an investigation of the president as early as 2017 by the FBI. Uh, The president asked about that on Fox Saturday night. Are you now or have you ever worked for Russia, Mr. President? I think it's the most insulting thing I've ever been asked. I think it's the most insulting article I've ever had written. Uh, and if you read the article, you'd see that they found absolutely nothing. So what do you make, number one, of the response of the president, number two, of the story itself and uh, any concerns that might arise from it politically? Well, first, I think we ought to recognize uh, who was asking the question. It was a commentator from Fox News. So if we really think about it, about how far the Uh, political spectrum has shifted. Now, even Fox News is raising the question about, are you an agent for the Russian Uh, Although, in fairness, Bill, I think that Jeanine Pirro was doing it kind of like with a smirk on her face, like, you're not working for the Russians, Uh, are you? I think that was kind of the spirit of that. But I think it also got asked on other uh, sort of programs on Fox News as well. The reason why I said that is uh, that particular commentator is the one you played. Um, The idea, though, is, is that there is this question about all the things that can be lined up on a piece of paper that have sort of provided sort of a questionable element on how President Trump engages with the Russians. The particular issue that you raised also was the issue about the uh, the, uh, translator. Um, You know, one would have to imagine that a translator has to have a high degree of uh, integrity and also 
be in a situation where they're not going to reveal everything that takes place because of the confidence that the president has to have in them. However, this issue was raised uh, when the actual meetings between Trump and Putin were taking place, and immediately all the notes were taken away from this person. And when the president's top advisors, such as Rex Tillerson, didn't know what was transpiring in those meetings, even after it happened, you have to wonder what is actually going on when the president's top advisors don't know what the president was discussing with Vladimir Putin. Um, hauling the translator into a congressional hearing is probably not going to be that productive. It's going to be a media sensation, but I think that there's probably going to be the issue about executive privilege, and there's also going to be sort of the professionalism of the translator themselves. Yeah, and the question I think you point out, which is, the important one is that the president didn't even share it. It's not a matter of whether he shared it or had the interpreter or the translator share it with uh, media or anything. It's that they didn't even share it within the administration. So right. and that if your secretary, people. right, if the secretary of state doesn't know what you're talking about, then that puts them at somewhat of a disadvantage, I would guess. So well, we're also uh, seeing this this pattern continue to exist with President Trump, where he sends uh, Vice President Pence up to Congress to try and negotiate something about the. The, the stalemate that they're in with regard to the budget and the wall, and then undercuts him as soon as he gets back to the White House. So um, this is a, a strategy or a tactic that the president uses often. We've seen the same thing happen with John Bolton. We've seen the same thing happen with Mike Pompeo. Um, this is the way President Trump operates. He is the principal actor, and other people are acting supposedly on his behalf, but really aren't necessarily doing it with full authority. Which makes you wonder again, to the point of who is supporting the president during the shutdown, is supporting the president, does that translate to support for you if you're a member of the House or a member of the Senate and you're a Republican? And people are saying, I support the president, but that doesn't necessarily translate to support among your constituents, does it? Or does it? Well, well, I think you're going exactly in the right direction. Here we have uh, Senator McConnell, who won't even talk about uh, the, the budget impasse in the wall until the president sort of reveals that he is in favor of a certain type of action. So we have McConnell, who is the top Republican in the Senate, is AWOL. He's not really playing a role here. He's saying nothing gets considered on the floor until the president acknowledges that he's for that particular option. So he doesn't want to get caught in this because he's already negotiated a, an agreement with the Democrats. The uh, entire United States Senate had reached an agreement about the budget, and then the president blew it up. Bill Rosenberg, thank you as always. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you again next week. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye. You too, Dr. William Rosenberg, professor of political science at Drexel University, joining us here, the politics of well, the president and Russia, and of course, the shutdown. He is tweeting at Dr. B. Rosenberg at Dr. B. That is D-R-B Rosenberg, R-O-S-E-N-B-E-R-G.